Hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to set up directional sprite billboarding for characters. And this works whether you're using pixel art or any other kind of 2D art. In the sprite billboarding video, a lot of you were interested in this technique and requested I make a follow-up video about it, so here we are. I will assume you've already set up the basic sprite billboarding from the previous tutorial, so make sure you go watch that video first, link down in the description. Additionally, I've imported and set up a few things in this project just to make the tutorial scene a little bit nicer and easier to showcase. I've imported Unity's standard asset third-person controller and set up some animations for my player character here. I've also added some post-processing effects and made a sprite shader to work with URP lighting. And I've done a few other things like this throughout. You don't need to do any of this. I'm only doing it to better showcase the stuff I'll be showing you. If you already have a working project you want to use, or if you're following along with the last video, the stuff I'll be showing you should work no problem. Having said that, if anything else I'm doing here interests you, let me know for some future tutorials. And with all that said, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is a suggestion from a YouTube comment. Peter Wilzinski, sorry about my pronunciation there, suggested we change the sprite billboarding script to late update rather than update, so the camera is always updated first. This is a minor change, but I do think it makes sense, so we'll be using this idea going forward with these sprite billboarding tutorials, so thanks for the suggestion. Alright, with that done, let's hop into a sprite, where I've made an animated sprite to help us with this tutorial. This is Tutorial Slime. It has three animations, a front idle, a side idle, and a back idle. Our goal in this tutorial is to get it to display the right animation based on our angle of view from the player camera. So back in Unity, let's create a new game object and reset the transform. We'll name this object Tutorial Slime. Because we'll be interested in the facing of this object, we'll make a child object called GFX, where we'll add the sprite renderer and the sprite billboard script. As talked about in the previous sprite billboarding tutorial, you'll need the 2D sprite package from Unity to be installed to continue. So let's import our tutorial slime sprite sheet onto Unity. We'll change the settings to be sprite 2D. Sprite mode should be multiple since this texture has more than a single sprite. In my case, I'm using 16 pixels per unit. And since we're working with pixel art here, I'll be setting the filter mode to point and the compression to none. Next, we'll need to use the sprite editor to slice up the sprites. So in my case, I know my sprites are 16 by 16 pixels. So I'll be using the grid by cell size option. But if you're not sure what size your sprites are because maybe you downloaded them, you can count how many columns and rows the sprite sheet has and use grid by cell count. I'm also going to make sure that the pivot point here is set to bottom, apply all the changes, and that'll do. Now to create some animations. First, I'll make a folder for the animations, and then I'll grab the sliced sprites for each animation and drop them onto the GFX child of the tutorial slime. When you do this, if the object you drop the sprites to does not already have an animator and an animator controller, Unity will create one automatically. We'll save the animation in the folder we made, name it, in this case it's the idle front animation, and then we'll do that process for every animation we want. Once that's done, we need to set up the animator controller. First off, let's make sure the animator window is open. If you don't have it open, you can open it by going to Window, Animation, Animator. Make sure the Tutorial Slime Animator Controller is selected, and now we can start working on the animations. I'm going to use a blend tree to animate the slime. I find it a lot more intuitive and less messy than just a bunch of states and transitions here in the default animator. So we'll right click and create a new blend tree in state. We'll also want to create a few parameters. So on the top left of the animator, we'll choose parameters and create two new floats. Move X and move Y. Next, we can select the blend tree and change it to blend type 2D simple directional, where we'll pass in our parameters. Now to add the animations we created as our motions for the blend tree. Click the plus icon and add motion field. 
We want four motion fields, though in my case, since I'll be mirroring my side animation for left and right movement, I could do three motion fields. But we'll stick with four in case your sprite sheet has four directional animations. So what we're doing here is telling the blend tree what animation to play based on the two move parameters that we've created. So we want to set what those parameters should be in order to play that animation. For the front animation, we want a positive 1 on the Y with 0 in the X. For the back animation, we want a negative 1 on the Y and 0 X. The X parameter will control the left and right animations. So we'll make Y 0 and make X positive and negative 1 in each of those. In this case, I've got this as the right direction and this as the left direction, which you can see highlighted in the blend graphic here. And that's really it. I find that to be so much better than trying to create a bunch of states with transitions, but let me know how you like to animate sprites in Unity. Of course, now we need to make a new script to actually set these parameters. So let's create a new script named Sprite Directional Controller and open it up. We can delete this stuff, we won't need it. And we'll use the late update method as mentioned earlier. Before we start, let's think through what exactly we want. We want to determine what animation to play, or rather what value the move X and move Y parameters should have, based on the angle between the main transform of the tutorial slime and the camera. In my case, I have a third person camera, but this will also work with first person. So let's imagine that both the camera and the slime are on a flat 2D plane. Let's imagine the front face as a vector that points to where they're looking. So we'll say the slime is facing forward in this direction, and the camera is looking at the slime from some other direction. Let's move these vectors around without changing their angle. Let's also draw out the angle we want, which is the angle right here. Or this one, they're the same. So essentially, we're looking for an angle in 2D space, in other words, on a plane. So let's hop back into Visual Studio and start working on this. Unfortunately, we can't just use the camera's forward vector because that's going to change as we pitch the camera up and down. So let's make a new forward vector for the camera. We'll call it cam forward vector, and we'll make it be made up of the camera's forward vector X and Z components since that's the plane we're interested in. If you're not sure why we're doing this still, let me show you with some gizmos. Let's put a line here, debug.drawRay. The start of the ray will be the camera's position, and the direction will be this new forward we made. We'll multiply the direction to make the ray a little longer and easier to see, and we'll make it a magenta color. Back in Unity, let's take a look. Before we enter play mode, I'm just going to add a sprite to the sprite renderer of the slime so we can see it better in edit mode, and the script that we just made to the GFX child of the main slime object. If I go into side view and we have the camera selected, you can see the forward vector of the camera, represented by the blue arrow, is not quite the same as our new magenta forward vector, because the camera is pitching up and down. In the top view though, they match up, which is exactly what we want. Again, we're trying to get the angle between the magenta ray and the forward vector of the tutorial slime, which if you select the slime, you can see the blue arrow representing that. By creating this new forward vector for the camera, we are essentially ignoring the y-axis and working on an XZ plane. Back in Visual Studio, we have a bit more, but don't worry, it's pretty simple. First, let's create some exposed fields in this script using Serialized Field. We'll want access to the main transform of Tutorial Slime, the animator, and the sprite renderer. Back in the late update method, we want a float to store the angle in, and we'll call this signed angle, and use the vector 3 dot signed angle method to generate it. This method takes in a from vector and a to vector, as well as an axis. We'll use main transform dot forward and cam forward vector. For the axis, we'll use the y axis since we're working on the x z plane, so we can use vector 3 dot up here. 
Next, let's create a new vector2 that will be used to store the values we'll pass into the animator. We'll call it animation direction. Let's also make a new float named angle that will be the absolute value of the signed angle. So now if the angle is below certain thresholds, we want to change our parameters. Let's create two new exposed fields, back angle, which will initiate at 65, and side angle, which will initiate at 155. So if the angle is less than back angle, we want to play the back animation which is x equals to zero, y equals to minus one. If the angle is less than side angle, we'll play the side animation, which is x equal to one or minus one and y equal to zero. A bit more on this in a minute. Else, we'll play the front animation, which is x equal to zero, y equal to one. Now we need to pass in the animation direction vector into the animator. So we say animator.setFloat, because those parameters we made were floats. We need their name, and you have to make sure you type the name exactly the same here. And we'll pass in the x value of the vector for move x, and the y value for move y. Let's check this out. We just have to drop in the main transform animator and sprite renderer components into the script here and please make sure that for main transform you're dropping in the parent transform of the tutorial slime and not the gfx object so it's already working but there's an issue with the side animations it's only playing the left side animation but we want to flip it when we look at the slime's right side back in visual studio this is a simple solution if you were wondering why I bothered to use the vector3 signed angle method, which can return negative values, only to then get the absolute value angle later, this is the reason. We want the signed angle so that if the signed angle is below zero, in other words, negative, we flip the sprite renderer x, else the flip should be false. Note that this will flip the front and back animations as well when the signed angle is negative. So if you don't want that, you could take this and place it inside the side angle view and make sure that the front and back animations are not flipped. So that flips only happen on side angles. You could also change the sprite flip to actually pass in different values to the animation direction if you want a different animation for your left and right animations. You can mess with the side and back angle exposed fields if you want to change at what angle exactly those animations play. Your values should be between 0 and 180 for this. And that's it! Now you can play different animations or even change the sprite completely for the different angles you view your sprite billboards from. I hope you found this video helpful and let me know if there's anything you want covered in another tutorial. I have a few ideas myself but I'm always more interested in what people want to see next. I want to give an extra special thanks to my Patreons. It means a lot to me that some people are supporting me on there, but also an extra special thanks to everyone watching these videos. And I hope you'll leave me some comments with what you want to see next. But also, if you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more content. And as always, thank you so much for watching.